Let's make these circles draggable with D3 drag. Dragging things around is super cool. Let's explore how to do this with D3 drag. I'll start by forking this circles with D3 example and I'll call it draggable circles with D3. Let's check out the documentation for D3 drag which lets you press and hold to grab a thing on the screen and then drag it to a new location. So the first step is to instantiate an instance of D3 drag. Over in our code, I'll clear out the readme and say draggable circles using D3 drag. And I'll paste the link right there. Okay, here we have our, here is the entirety of our earlier example of circles with D3. I'd like to make it so that you can click one of these circles and drag it to move it around. The first step there is to import drag from D3 and then I will instantiate an instance of that. I'll call it drag instance and just invoke drag as a function. The documentation says it creates a new drag behavior. Okay, so let me call it a drag behavior, just for consistency's sake. Now that we have instantiated our drag behavior, let's take a look at how we can invoke it. In this example, it selects all nodes, presumably in like a force directed layout kind of a thing, and then it uses dot call to invoke this drag behavior, which is an instance of uh, D3 drag with this event listener added on start started. So let's try that and see if we can get something to output when we try to drag one of these circles. On our drag instance, let's set up the a listener on start started, um, but I'll just make this a function that says console.log drag started. And I believe what we want to do is use dot call on the circles. So let's try dot call drag behavior. Let's see if that works. If I attempt to drag it, it says drag started. Okay, we're like halfway there. All we need to do now is know which circle we are dragging and then update the data when it drags. In the documentation for drag.on, it says that there are a couple of different event types, one of which is drag. That's the one that will get called every time you move one of the circles, like one pixel. This documentation also says when a specified event is dispatched, each listener will be invoked with the current event and datum. So let's try listening for that drag event and getting at the current datum D. I'll change start here to drag and then I'll add some arguments to this function event and D. And then I'll just console.log D. And then when I drag it outputs the specific datum for that circle that I dragged. Okay, we are listening for the drag events. We know which circle we are trying to drag. Now the task before us is to know where to drag it to and then to update the data and then re-render our circles to update the location of the circle. It says here that drag events have X and Y coordinates on them. Let's try to access those by saying console.log event.x and event.y. Now uh, it's outputting these coordinates. All right, that's how you get access to the coordinates that you dragged to. Now let's update the data of the circles to use those coordinates. And this is where the notion of unidirectional data flow comes into play. Because the data will change over time, I'd like to make it a part of the state 
So let's destructure state and set state and initialize data on the state by saying if there's no such thing as state.data, then we define this initial data and call set state, passing a function that uses immutable update patterns to define data as initial data. And then we return. Then down below, we can use state.data in our data join. What we've done here is sort of elevated this data to be a part of the state, meaning we can change it over time. And then whenever we change it, uh, this whole main function will get invoked again and re-render the whole graphic with the latest version of the state. And with dragging, we can use this to make it so that when you drag, when we get these drag events, it will update x and y of the particular circle that we're dragging. So how do we do that? In the drag handler, I know we're going to want to call set state. And this will redefine data on the state to be state.data.map. Because what we want to do here is look at each and every one of these D elements and say, OK, if D is the same D that we got from the drag event, and we have a naming conflict here with the Ds. So I'll rename this outer one to be dragged datum. We can check for each of the data elements. Is that particular one that we're looking to the same as the one that we are dragging? If so, we want to return that existing datum but with the new x and y. So let's assign x to be event.x and y to be event.y. Otherwise, if it's not the one that we're dragging, we just return that particular d, because it's one of those other circles that we're not dragging. So let's see if that worked. Nope, it didn't work. There's some kind of an error cannot read x of undefined. Oh, that's when it's trying to access the circle.x. OK, it looks like there's something wrong with state.data. So let me try console.log state.data. Let's see what we get. Oh, well, they're all undefined. OK. In my function here, it looks like I forgot the return. It doesn't actually return it. Let's try now. OK, it drags a little bit. It drags like one pixel. Why would that be? It just drags a tiny bit. Well, I think it might have to do with this comparison here. See, this is doing object equality comparison to check if it is the exact same object. But after one round of the update, it creates a new object, which is a copy of the old object with new values for x and y. Therefore, this thing here is not going to be equal to dragged datum. How can we solve this? One way to do it is to give each of these circles a unique ID. Then we can compare d.id is equal to dragged datum.id. And all we need to do now to make this work is to give these things IDs. How could we add IDs to our initial data? Well, I think the minimal change approach would be to say dot for each, which executes a function on each one of these. And then we can say d dot ID equals I, the index of the array. And that's passed as the second argument in this function of for each. By the way, I noticed a little bug in this code. Uh, it turns out that for each does not actually return the array. So I need to change this around a little bit 
to first declare initial data and then say initial data dot for each where we assign the IDs. So now, does it work? Yes, it does. All right, look at that. Okay, that's basically how you can get circles to be draggable. But there's one last little touch that I think is good for, for things that you can drag or otherwise interact with, and that is to change the cursor. On these circles, I'm going to say dot style, cursor is pointer. That way, when you hover over them, see how the cursor changes? That's a good affordance that something is interactive. In user interfaces, an affordance is a subtle thing that tells the user that the thing is interactive, and changing the cursor is one such affordance. You could also do something like change it to be a slightly different color on hover, uh, but I find cursor changes it's a pretty good affordance. Okay, the circles are draggable. To recap all the changes we made, at the top level of our main function, we adopted state and set state, this pattern of unidirectional data flow, so that we could define state.data with this code here, which says if state.data has not yet been initialized, we initialize state.data to be initial data, which is the data that we had before, but with unique identifiers appended. So now, now each of these objects has an ID property, which is the index in the array. So it's just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the reason why we had to give each one of these a unique ID is so that when we create this drag behavior, and define the event listener for the drag event, we want to be able to compare the ID of the dragged datum, which is passed in here, to the ID of each of our data elements as we loop through them in this immutable update pattern here. So what this function is doing overall, it gets the event, which has the x and y coordinates of where you're dragging it to, and it also gets the dragged datum. And then we call set state to update state.data using this immutable update pattern here, which says, okay, given the old state, we derive a new object for the new state, which contains all the existing fields of the previous state, but the data field is overwritten to be this new array, which we derive by saying state.data.map over each of these elements. And if it's not the dragged datum, then we just leave it alone. We just return the existing element. But if it is the one that we're dragging, then instead of returning the old data element, we, we return a brand new object that contains all the fields of the data element and this one, by the way, is what preserves things like the fill and the radius. But then we override x and y to be event.x and event.y from our drag event. And you know, this could be cleaned up a little bit by using implicit return, which just makes it a little bit more concise. So the overall effect of this is when you drag, it updates the state and then invokes main again with a new version of the state and then all the way down here, when we draw the circles, we use state.data so that we get the updated version of the circles. And this just, you know, applies the D3 general update pattern to all the circles, updating their CX and CY to be the latest version of X and Y that we got from dragging. So that's all the code that you need to implement draggable circles with D3 drag.